John Baker here from RotacRepair.ca. Beside me is a 582. I had just commenced the Rotax break-in procedure on it. I didn't run it very long uh, when I realized that it has quite a vibration in it. Uh, I figured today we'll go through the procedure that I go through to find out where the problem is and correct it. So we'll carry on and see where the problem is. First thing in checking the tracking, I have a box, anything will work that you can use. Um, under the propeller, extra piece of wood for a spacer. Uh, I'm just using a piece of angle iron. Aluminum would be a little more elegant. Now, very important that the prop stops in the same place every time. So what I'm gonna do first is, that to me is, is uh, visually, 90 degrees to the ground, but we need to make sure we take this at the same place all the time. So I'm just going to draw a straight line right there. The blades are already numbered on this one. So I'm going to, if they're not numbered, generally I put a piece of tape on the end with the number. So I'm lining the leading edge up with the line that I have right there. And I'm going to put my piece of angle against there. And I'm going to draw a line, I just very gently pinch it, draw a line, and I'm going to put the number one beside that because that's the first number one blade is labeled. And let's come around to the second blade. And again, I want to line up that first mark. We'll make another line. This one is going to be number two. The third one. And again, we're going to line it up. It's very important. If I, if I bring it past, it's going to move it out or it's going to move it back if it's in a different place. So as long as I'm consistent, I don't think it really matters if it's 90 degrees to the floor there as long as it's the same each time is what I'm after. And let's go the same way again. And let's draw another line. And this is number three. And then I'm going to measure it. That's a good 316. I should also mention that this box I have weighted down with some ballast in the bottom of it because you don't want the your table, your box, whatever you're going to use to move. It has to be absolutely stable. It can't move. So it's uh, got quite a bit of error in its tracking. Uh, that will have this propeller. Potentially all the blades could be the same and it could be balanced, but it has a, what I call an aerodynamic imbalance. Uh, and um, whether that's the way to describe it as far as propellers goes, but that's the way I describe it. Now the goal now is that I want to find out why I have such a difference here. So is the propeller where it's mounted on the hub is the hub crooked? Is the one of the blades in a little bit off? I'm not really sure. Angle of the blades, visually, they're certainly all parallel. So I haven't checked to see how many degrees are on it. But when they set the uh, pitch on this, I think they did a reasonably accurate job because they're all pretty much parallel. It's maybe a little bit tighter in between here than there. So when you finish pitching your propeller, is another thought. When you finish pitching your propeller, you want to see how accurate you were. You can do the same thing. You can put the three lines should all be completely beside each other. Ideally, it would be nice if all three lines actually were touching each other. That would be perfectly straight. But we don't always get that. That's why there is a tolerance in this that you can, uh, an allowable amount of tracking error. So let's find out what's going on here. So I'm going to take the prop off. And then we want to check the hub and see what's going on there. Step is I'm going to dismantle the prop. Now I've marked each blade with its own number. This was already numbered as the uh, propeller came in. I'm going to make sure that I don't put the same one back in the same position. So I'm going to switch them up a little bit and try and see if the averages work out. And I'm also going to uh, visually inspect the hub as well when it's apart. Uh, there could be some contamination in between the number three blade in here. Who knows? Now I'm going to take this away under, uh, look at it under my magnifying light and make sure that there isn't any cracks in it. I'll do the same with the other half. But something of note here, see this blade now, it's just sitting there. This one as well. 
This one, it's kind of stuck in there. So, and this is blade number three, the one that was way out of tracking. So, uh, I think, uh, see these guys, they just lift right up, no problem at all. That one, look, I can lift the whole prop up, the whole hub up with it. You can't with these. So, I think I'm on to something on blade number three. There we go, look at that, it won't even shake off. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was about as hard as I could push to get that to pop out. So what's going on here? Does it have some kind of contamination on it? A burr or something? I don't feel anything. It looks like it's got a beautiful finish on it. The messy number three. I'm going to go and have a really good look at this and try and find out why that was stuck in there as it was. Yeah, I can almost squeeze that with my hand and make it stick in there. Okay, I'll take this one over and have a good look at this half too. What I found when using the Warp Drive Pro Tractor, it's an excellent device. But what I did learn early on, my bubble isn't on. And if I'm going to bang the prop, like I used to kind of wrap the prop to make the blade turn, it'll actually turn the setting a little bit, even though the lock is tight on it. So I made this uh, fancy tool here, which is two pieces of scrap lumber with a bolt and a pad on the bolt in between. And I just slip it over the blade, pinch it together at the bottom. And now in a very controlled banner, I can move the blade exactly where I want it. I don't have to bump it, bang it. It's kind of hard on my hand anyway. And I can go and it is perfectly centered on the bubble. So that's awesome. Here's our next blade. Now these are as they are in the instructions. I probably should show that. This is tight that the weight of the wrench is as tight as I'm making that. The flange mounting bolts and these ones just barely turn. So they're not loose, they're not tight. I just go by the fact that I can just rotate them a little teeny bit and there's some resistance there. I want it so I can move the blade reasonably easily but I don't want to, uh, to have it flopping all over the place so that it changes. Whoop, too far. And see how easy that is with my fancy dancy tool. Then just with the wrenches, I will just give it a little teeny snug to keep my setting. And that's it at this point in time. I'll move along to the uh, next blade and I'm always trying to keep the blade level so when I set it in place uh, you can use a bubble level um, I just use this little digital guy get it as level as possible parallel to the ground because again we want to do the same thing with each blade okay so put our fancy tool over there Give this a little turn. Now you can feel this blade's a little tighter than the other two were because I give them a little bit of a snug to hold them in place, which I'll do again here. And I won't bore you with the details, but I'm going to go through this again in the full rotation and make sure that nothing moved and they're all set. Um, this is going to be set at 12 degrees, right on 12 degrees. Um, when I had the tool on here, I was a degree tipped that way, so I need to put 11 on it and it gives me a 12 degree split. If you were really paying attention, you would have noticed that and I didn't at the time, that the bolts in here were in backwards. The heads were on this side where the nut should be on this side. Why is that important? That's because we need to torque it 
it's going to be 120 inch pounds. I need to hold it on the back side because I'm not supposed to be turning the bolt. I'm holding the bolt and I'm torquing the nut. Okay, so I ran them all out individually one at a time and flipped them around. I didn't have to take the prop back off or anything like that. Um, so at any rate, and I have, of course, because I had to uh, work with those, I just rechecked all the blades and the pitch is still exactly where it was supposed to be. So we'll check the tracking now and we'll see if we got anything from that whole exercise. Let's do our measurements now that we've had this all apart, switch the blades and reset the pitch. So this is, I'm going to use the hub number. So this is hub one. So hub position number one, is right there. And this is hub position number two. We'll label this one as two. Oh, that's way off. And let's go to three, which was the odd one out before, and see what we have now. And number three is right there. Okay, so that's hub position number three. Let's see what we learned. Where are we at this point in time? We know it's not the propeller mounting flange. It's within a thousand seven inch. It's not that. It isn't the spacer plate in between the propeller and the flange because I measured it and it's exactly parallel surfaces. So it's not that. So that left is with hub and blades alignment for whatever reason. Now, the first number, if you remember, is the hub position. So that's the original one. So hub position number three had blade number three in it and so on before. What's the difference now? Hub number three is really nicely in line with number one. Number one hasn't changed. It's got the same blade in the same position. What's different now? Where's this blade number three? Now it's in position number two on the hub and look how far out it is. I would say that's a good 3 16 It's uh, it's pretty much right on 3 16 um, So I consider that a little bit excessive. Um, at this point, it appears to me that there must be some issue with blade number three. Now, uh, at this point in time, I am going to contact Warp Drive um, and um, ask them uh, for their input on this uh, situation here and we'll go from there. I managed to gain not very much. Uh, as far as I can see, uh, the blade number three, there's something odd with it. I just spoke to Warp Drive on the phone. They were very pleasant, very professional. Um, and uh, they'd like the propeller shipped uh, down to them so that they can see what the issue is and repair whatever it needs to do to fix it. Uh, tracking on the propeller, uh, you know, ideally we would like to have something that's perfect where all the lines are pretty much touching each other. That would be awesome. But a 16th is, is uh, acceptable and their spec is 1 8th. Um, tracking error is the very max. Uh, and if you remember, we started at a quarter. I didn't gain much after this other than I think I know where the problem is because uh, now we're at 3 16 of an inch, way out over spec. It's gonna vibrate like no tomorrow, and uh, we don't want it to damage the engine. Uh, now, I, I think on the Challengers, with the, with the mount plate that's on it, it has eight Lord mounts on it. I think the engine can be vibrating pretty bad and you don't even feel it in the airplane. So uh, it's not to say that uh, the, the pilot is not paying attention. I just don't think a lot of vibration probably makes it through. The engine, yeah, it's, it's vibrating pretty, pretty good, I'm sure. Uh, so that can affect the uh, mixture. It can be frothing up the fuel in the carburetors. Uh, it can be doing a lot of things. Bolts come loose. Uh, it, it just goes on and on. Vibrations in airplanes, we just don't want to have vibrations at all. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.